of the recording. So, hello everybody. Uh, first of all, Adab, Sasriya Kal, Pranam, Namaste to all of you. Let's begin today's invocation with a song on Maharshi Arvindo and a song of Alama Iqbal. So I'm just playing, sharing the screen.
thank you so much for your kind attention i have another song written by alama ikbal i also want to play this song as an invocation so i'm just sharing the slide
thank you so much for your kind attention um, i run on behalf of school of humanities and social sciences of rakhine university you love that i welcome you i also welcome you on behalf of swadhyay sahachakra circle for creative co learning vishwanidan center for asian blossoming puducherry and chennai and rej global foundation usa first of all it's an honor and privilege to have available with us our distinguished speaker mohammad maruk sir kuch sunai nahi deta honor from हिंदी में बोलिए यस यस ओके सुनाई नहीं देता हिंदी में बोलिए हिंदी में भी बोलेंगे सर आप सर ये इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार है तो एटलीस्ट वी हैव टू मेंटेन द स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर आवर मेजोरिटी ऑफ ऑडियंस लेकिन फिर भी इन बिटवीन हिंदी का यूज होगा डोंट वरी बी प्लीज डो नॉट डू नॉट डिस्टर्ब इन बिटवीन थैंक यू ओके सो रिस्पेक्टेड पार्टिसिपेंट विल हैव ट्रांसलेशन इन कोरिया एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश आल्सो जस्ट से योर कैन एंड एंड डियर रणधीर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू आवर रिस्पेक्टेड सिस्टर यू मिक्स विद हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश यू नो यस सर आई थिंक ओके Uh, please go ahead uh, it's a, it's an honor and privilege to have available with us our distinguished speaker dr mohammad maruf shah an independent scholar from jammu and kashmir uh we joined by uh, richard har uh, a thinker uh, artist of sri arvindo ashram puducherry uh, india i extend my warm welcome to honorable chief justice former chief justice of rajasthan high court meena bi dr meena bi dom honorable vice chancellor of rajasthan university professor divakar goli professor anand giri professor at madras institute of development studies sir kuch chhai nahi deta uh, anil ji aap patience maintain kare uh, aap kuch nahi dega uh, uh, okay uh i don't the voice is loud and clear it is uh, reaching to okay. everybody sir language problem hai to theek ho jayega please do not disturb meanwhile, it's a humble request okay okay yes um so um and all the respected participants viewers listeners and knowledge speakers thank you so much for joining let me give a brief introduction to our swadhyay sachakr namaskar we have start our uh, discussion uh, dr devendra mute somebody if uh, yes yes uh, i am i am doing this yes uh, so swadhyay sachakr uh, circle for creative co learning of self and mutual study it is an initiative of study and learning together self culture societies and the world friends associated with kuch nahi deta i don't know why somebody is uh, continuously disturbed a uh, please don't add that jatin das your uh, chair Randeep ji, you continue. Okay, please remove the person. If somebody is sure, struggling, sure. thank you. No problem. So, uh, we study seekers uh, such as Sri Arvindo Gandhi, Chitranjan Das, a uh, seeker and creative thinker from Orissa, and many others from around the world. We also present our own writing upon our own creativity together. we also invite seekers from different fields of life to share with us their visions uh, sadhana struggle for creating a world of beauty dignity and dialogue we meet every sunday or sometimes on wednesday 
now we are nurturing this dialogue in coordination and cooperation with raise global foundation usa and school of humanities and social sciences of jaffa school uh today is a very special talk on uh, maharshi uh, arvindo and alama ikbal somebody correctly observed it might be a thousand of years before anudar ikbal is born alama ikbal and maharshi arvindo are very significant thinker to discuss because we live in a time which is uh, categorized as a soul is this faithless utterly impersonal and we are lacking any integrative force other than power and interest gandhi ji wrote a heartful letter when he heard of alama ikbal's death in 1938 in his letter he says that he had recited ikbal's famous poem as a played in the invocation hindustan hamara sare jahan se acha hundreds of times in prison and he found the words of that poem very sweet even today he says in remembrance of ikbal he could hear those beautiful lyrics ringing in his ear i can remember one another incident in 1984 rakesh sharma became in a space on live television broadcast simati indira gandhi asked to him how india looked from outer space and he replied sare jahan se acha hindustan hamara with these two illustrations we can feel that ikbal and his creation means to us a lot ikbal may still be a major presence in pakistan but in india he is almost forgotten the institution of creation of pakistan i can remember one very important and relevant situation of alama ikbal nations are born in the heart of poets they prosper and die in the hands of politicians both alama ikbal and maharshi arvindo are intellectual very patron critical and creative both are shared heritage of south asian society in fact for the and kind both speak for for with this brief introduction now i would like to invite professor anand kumar ji sir to kindly moderate the session shukriya shukran <laughs> so dear randi and a warm welcome to maru and uh, richard and all friends co present uh, professor mira chakra sir kuch bhi sunai nahi de raha kyun ab dekhiye you have some problem in the mic please do not disturb us eh? we request you so randhir you can hear me sir i can hear you i i think somebody is uh, you can hear me now is it okay yes, sir you are you are audible loud and clear uh, okay. there is some problem so, lovely. The so dear friends so it is a joy for us to cultivate this journey with sri arabindo and alama ikbal today and we are very fortunate and blessed to have our dear friend uh, mohammad maroof saha and i remember when i was visiting kashmir in 2009 and just seeing the library of kashmir university as uh, ikbal library alama ikbal library it created such a deep ripple in my heart and then uh, of course maruf has written a book on science and religion and reflecting on reconstruction of religious thought uh, in islam that alama ikbal has uh, written and uh, so to be able to just journey together sri arabindo and alama ikbal today and it is a long journey because uh, in india i and many of us and i particularly have very little 
the journey realization of Alama Iqbal. But when we listen to this song, Sare Jahan Se Acha Hindu Sita Hamara, as Gandhi wrote, as Mahatma Gandhi wrote, that it brings a different journey within us. And how do we feel the vibration of this journey today? Sara Jahan Se Acha Hindu Sita Hamara. It is in that same spirit. And if Sri Aurobindo and uh, Iqbal were alive today, how would they sing that song? Sara Jahan Se Acha Hindu Sita Hamara would definitely give them in a sensation to realize that Sara Jahan Se Acha Pakistan Hamara, Sara Jahan Se Acha Chin Hamara, Sara Jahan Se Acha Biswa Hamara. And uh, as we listen to this song, uh, we also remember another animating song, Bande Mataram. And uh, Bande Mataram, of course, was uh, you know, initiated by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. And Sri Aurobindo, at a young age, uh, he was deeply touched by Bankim Chandra and, uh, and this song, Bande Mataram. And uh, the the and he also edited a journal Bande Mataram, and his writings have been collected with this book Bande Mataram. Now, as we try to open ourselves to this simultaneous journey with uh, Sri Aurobindo and Alama Iqbal, we can try to understand a few themes. One is that how Sri Aurobindo and Alama Iqbal, both of them, they were deeply interested in transformation of a critical reflection and transformation of existing discourse and practice of religion and spirituality. And here, Sri Aurobindo's critique of Sankara, and especially uh, the the dominance of Mayabada in uh, Indian philosophy and and way of life, which led to a kind of abnegation and negation of self and the world, Sri Aurobindo was deeply critical of it, and the yoga of the Maha Yogi. In fact, the name Maha Yogi, as Professor Manoj Das writes in his recent deeply, deeply uh, you know, spiritual experience that it creates his biography of Mohayogi Sri Aurobindo. Now, this name was first uttered by, uh, by Sarada Mata, Mata Sarada, the wife of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And he uttered this word while uh, interacting with wives of Sri Aurobindo, that is Muranili Devi. So both uh, Sri Aurobindo and Alama Iqbal were deeply critical of world negation philosophy and way of life. And in this context, Sri Aurobindo's critique of Sankara, though as Radhakrishnan, the other great uh, spiritual seeker and philosopher of India says, that Sankara's philosophy is not just Mayabada. And therefore, when we understand Sri Aurobindo's critique of Sankara, with all humility, we are also challenged to understand Sankara in himself, not just as Sri Aurobindo critiques Sankara. But having said that, that the whole critique of a kind of escape from the world that Sri, and not only a critique of escape from the world and escape from self, as Sri Aurobindo writes in Sabitri, escape, however great, cannot really solve our problem. So a reconnection with the world, and that spirit also is in Alama Iqbal, as he writes in, uh, in his book, Asnara e Khudi, the moral and religious ideal of man is not self-negation, but self-affirmation. And he attained to this ideal by becoming more and more individual, more and more unique. The prophet has said, taklahi ik aklak Allah, which means create in yourself the attributes of God. 
again divine life life divine the whole journey of the life divine is to ourselves becoming divine and alama iqbal continue this thus man becomes unique by becoming one and more like the most unique individual that is god and therefore he says that that is how the prophet after his attainment of spiritual uh, experience that is called mara mayraj he didn't go to heaven even after his ascension to heaven the prophet came back to the earth and he worked with people another very interesting connecting theme in both sri aurobindo and ikbal is the whole question of reason and skepticism and faith now bo ikbal for example he deeply values the significance of skepticism in religious life and maybe that was because he's open to the deep spiritual significance of modernity and in a same way sri aurobindo also relates to the modern world the birth of the modern world as a deeply spiritual significant moment of the birth of the subjective the individual not just as an egotistic individual but as the birth of the subjective which is a deep spiritual and evolutionary significance and then uh, the whole question of uh, dynamic uh, spirituality in both uh, sri aurobindo and alama iqbal and then of course another point is that we know that how in sri aurobindo man is a transitional being and that notion of the transitional being as man is needs to strive or on the way to realize the superman and the superman wants to differently than proposed by nietzsche that the superman is not just the master of the world but a different way of being with the world and uh, here uh, the other thing is that here we can um, read sri aurobindo's essays on the gita as another way of realizing a text in a tradition and uh, iqbal's the reconstruction of religious thought in islam and both iqbal and sri aurobindo they challenge us to move away from the dominant conception of renaissance that is renaissance which began in western europe but they look at the need for renaissance in the east renesa in india as the aurobindo writes and of course both of them we are critic of the colonial the colonial project and we know with the end of with the so called end of political colonialism let us put it this way that with the birth of independent india and pakistan for example has the colonial project ended no i think acknowledging the continued presence of colonialism in our social institutions and in our ways of thinking it is a reality with us and both sri aurobindo and alama iqbal challenge us first to acknowledge the even unconscious colonialism that is within us the colonialism of the mind the colonialism of social institutions just look at sedition law now our colonial masters i think they treated us more kindly more humanly than what our independent post independent masters are doing to us look at the sedition law anybody can be picked up you and me so it is in this sense that how do we understand the 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 killing colonialism of the present and then with sri aurobindo has uh, reflected that as he was in the jail one of his task would be to reform of the conditions of jail and how many of us including our political and spiritual masters who speak so much about sri aurobindo and we are going to celebrate his 150 years this elementary thing 
the suffering that both Gandhi and Sri Aurobindo went through because of the sedition law. And, and you have written, you have read about uh, Sri Aurobindo's, uh, you know, story, how he spent his time in the jail and the kind of pain and suffering he went through. And if it was a wish of Sri Aurobindo that the first project would be the jail reform, then is it not that on the, with the 150 years of Sri Aurobindo's, uh, instead of singing all these beautiful things about Sri Aurobindo, can we take up this challenge of creating a freer condition of not only the jail, but everywhere. Therefore, the challenge of coloniality, the killing coloniality, and how do we create conditions for liberation? So these are some of the challenges with us. So with this, it is a joy for me to invite uh, uh, Maruf to kindly share his thought. And after Maruf, we would we are enriched to have the thoughts of uh, Richard, uh, Mr. Richard Haas, my dear and respected friend from Sri Aurobindo Ashram. So Maruf, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's always a pleasure to be surrounded by such a galaxy of scholars. I just try to participate and try to learn. But anyway, I am sometimes asked to speak. I think we can begin. I am remembering there is a Buddhist professor from Sri Lanka who was who once made a very beautiful remark about Iqbal. He said, if aliens were to visit earth and they were to show the best of human thought in one text what has been the collective heritage of mankind it is highest aspirations it is intellectual philosophical spiritual mystical all those dimensions cultural knowledge and all those whatever comes in it then he thought we should present Iqbal's work to the aliens that would represent the whole mankind's collective legacy so that was a tribute by a Buddhist professor from Sri Lanka for Iqbal's work. So my point is Iqbal is one of the greatest global thinkers, but unfortunately he is not much known. Though in the Muslim world he, is, he has been so influential, but in India he should have been much better known. And in the West, I think in Germany and some other places slightly known but not the way he deserves. So I was thrilled when it was Anantaji proposed that Iqbal and Aurobindo we try to engage with the idea of how we see we both can travel together on this path. Since Anantaji raised some very important issues. Maybe I will be trying to build on some of them. But to begin with, I think we will have a quote from Aurobindo. I will quote him. If mankind could but see, though in a glimpse of fleeting experience, what infinite enjoyments, what perfect forces, what luminous reaches of spontaneous knowledge, what wide claims of our being lie awaiting for waiting for us in the tracks which our animal evolution has yet not conquered. They would leave all and never rest till they had gained these treasures. But the way is narrow, the doors are hard to force, and fear, distrust and skepticism are there, sentinels of nature, to forbid the turning away of our feet from her ordinary pastures. Basically, all great mystical philosophers, we, we, would, we can both classify Iqbal and Aurobindo as sages, as mystical philosophers. Mm. They're all in a way inviting us to the heaven within, to the great potential of the self that is, that is generally missed. So that's the great tragedy about human lot. So very few people who come to know about themselves. So what can be done about that? Iqbal is all about the philosophy of the self. And if we go by the critique of Aurobindo of Vedanta, as it is usually understood to be, that there is somehow self is not at the center, it's already somehow negated, and along with it goes world rejection. 
there is not affirmative transcendence. Then they both agree. In fact, Iqbal's critique of dominant understanding of Sufism was similar. Exactly arose in those point that Sufism is somehow the way it has been in a way evolved in certain particular environment. Though it does not apply to classical Sufism, Iqbal himself was simply a Sufi, a modern Sufi. He used all his reconstruction of religious thought is fundamentally attempting to reformulate the insights of Sufism in contemporary idiom. So he should be fundamentally read as a contributor to the mystical understanding of religion and human and Islam or whatever we can say. But given that he perceived certain trends in Sufism to be world-negating, self-negating, poetist, status quoist, in a way, the way, for example, then he would evolve a great critique of colonial project. And then for that, he had to critique some understanding which was prevalent in the subcontinent regarding Sufism as well. We can talk later about the, how to read this critique of Iqbal and Arubindo of respective traditions. Now, I think Frizab Shuman, for example, and others, and Kumar Swami, I would also say, has clarified much better this, the way Shankara, we use the terms Maya and all those things. So there is, not, there is nothing like that. The world is negative. In comparison to Brahman world is nothing. In comparison to God world is nothing. This is the common intuition of all great mystics. So fundamentally, Shankara is saying only that. And since there are, but I think here a more important is where Abhinav Gupta would find a soulmate is Abhinav Gupta of Kashmiri Shaivism. In fact, his whole project centers on affirmation of desire, world, what, 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 what we can call that, bog is yoke. Pleasure is in a way salvation. I, we should. So that was the most extreme form of affirmative transcendence possible in the world that has been in a way developed in Kashmir Shaivism. That's why is Kashmir Shaivism so open to worldly pleasures as a conduit to the salvation. Or it fundamentally translates Nagarjuna's insight that samsara is nirvana. It in a way reads too much into it and then it sees the whole phenomenal world as transparent. So the, to the sacred, and as such, to be in a way venerated, to be given, to be in a way given, seeing the light of the sacred. Now, in the project, I was remembering Mr. Eckhart would also say, there is a subtle center, in the center at the heart of the soul. If we could somehow know that, then everything would be meaningless for us, it would not interest us. In fact, Abdul Qadir Bedil is an Indian great for Persian poet. He has argued that whenever we want to really go to heaven, just go within. And it is, we, can, we have always, we can cultivate, it is always there, but we just do not enter into it. That is the issue. So if we want to read these great thinkers together, I think we have first their critical understanding of tradition. And one of the most important points is how they see modernity. See here, both Iqbal and Aurobindo would see that modernity is a challenge. It is a problem as well. But in fact, it has to be taken very seriously. Both Iqbal and Aurobindo have been criticized for taking empiricist or especially evolutionary outlook too seriously. There have been some great metaphysical critiques of evolution as an idea. But the way, for example, the idea of Superman would also for, get formulated in Iqbal and in Arabin. There are some Nietzschean echoes in especially Arabin, though Iqbal denied in Nietzschean influence. But then there have been some readings where we have been able to read them together on certain points. But I think Kumar Swami again comes handy here. He has a brilliant essay on Nietzsche's idea of Superman. Earlier, Kumar Swami in his dance of Shiva, the cosmopolitan view of Nietzsche. The Superman, as it has been usually read, is in a way a destruct, destroyer, in a way immoralist, 
in a way he blindly affirms the will of life and he rejects ethics as such rejects those higher values that has been fundamentally misunderstanding minutia has been misunderstood and that's why they his she was his sister was part of that project of misunderstanding it's why hitler and others could use i mean i would say misappropriate nietzsche but the problem is there is no danger of in a way coming to what we can call a negative view of superman if we closely read both arobindo and iqbal they are fundamentally they are fundamentally evoking a higher model for for both of them it is in a way timeless it takes history seriously but it is not just on the future only though we have a um, conception that in future more and more people will be spiritually elevated that idea is in fact in islam as well in a certain way after there again comes after this kali yug there again comes golden age or this kali yug is in a way mahdi comes he restores order again justice is restored but how then we read certain important critics of both iqbal and arabin i think they have partly a point but the more fundamentally they miss the larger point iqbal is argument for engaging with modernity and leaving the argument if we and if we go by the arabindo he would also in a way keep the idea open that in future it brings its own in a way new revelations are being we can if if we can put it that way ibn arabi was a great muslim philosopher and mystic and he is called the greatest sheikh greatest master he has also said that in the coming age the spiritual truths will be discussed in the streets in a way people have a greater opportunity of going higher and higher in this higher world now i would for example why is iqbal important then arabindo we would again we revisit him see iqbal tried to synthesize all that is important in human aspiration for the truth and the absolute see we know there are fundamentally four paths to the ultimate poetry philosophy religion and mysticism and iqbal's genius is he is trying to come he's trying to be with all of them engaging with all of them that's why ali shiridi was a great iranian sociologist and activist for he people are the greatest tributes to iqbal by saying ali iqbal is unfragmented man ali gune like ali ali you know was the great the way historic of the caliphs of islamic and the great the first metaphysician of islam if you can put that way so that was one of the greatest tributes that that shariati paid to iqbal now if holder in rilke and room we have worldwide audience if jibran hasse bojis and many other mystical and cult authors are still popular why not iqbal the mystic the poet the sage have worldwide audience and i would say as well or bindu as well they need to be much better but they are still restricted to a certain circle there is an enormous scope of iqbal who batted for rumi almost a century back and iqbal who read nietzsche in mystical terms well before his importance in the post modern thought came to be widely explored along this line we know nietzsche has been now read by many other scholars in more religious and mystical terms he was one of the most god intoxicated and iqbal has a great appreciation for nietzsche as well he made some great critical remarks as well on nietzsche and iqbal who formulated a mystical philosophy that addressed certain concerns of the nihilistic age in an idiom that is known to alien to its ears and iqbal who diagnosed decadence in the western civilization and suggested the turn east much before it became a rallying rallying cry appropriated by countless culture poets and some influential writers and philosophers and iqbal who championed passion vitality individuality freedom and faith in relationships and love in a milieu that still longs for retrieving them in a dehumanizing deindividualizing homogenizing masters i think arabin stands for all these things 
Now, it has been a great debate on the value of the individual and the distinction between the personality and the individuality and the self and the ego. And what is precisely that is negated by the traditions when it, when it says ego is the greatest in a way hindrance to the truth. But then the supreme is also described as the self. So we now normally should be self capital S and small s and that, that should we should be able to resolve the problem. No great mystic has ever been trying to liquidate the self. They have been always trying to get the higher, higher divine world appropriated. Or one gets what in Supitus we call Baka. That's why Iqbal, there is a key term of, of Mardi Mumin, who, has, who knows himself. This is Iqbal. So there is, a, there is that Atman is Brahman, that, that that idea finds echo in Mansur, al halaj whom earlier Iqbal criticized, but then he came to appreciate his point of a hidden Masanon and others. So my point is, if we can read these nuances, we would be better able to find a more proper form of engaging with both of these two gain thinkers. In post Nietzschean times, where the specter of nihilism Hello. still keeps haunting. Hello, Maru Bhai. Yes, sir. <laughs> as I as I hold you, uh, can yes, I request sir. you? I'll just take some time to translate it into Odia. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, my dear Maru and dear friends, uh, and I'm so happy to see Richard here. <laughs> so. We'll take uh, you know five minutes to translate uh, into Odia, and I I am grateful to you for generosity. So, Amaro Bhai Bhoni Mane, Maru Bhai Jo Kotha Kochanti, Sri Aurobindo, Ebang Alama Iqbal, Saman Ko Bhitre Se Ubhayo, Kemiti Eko Mystical Philosopher, Mystical. Mystical Rokabal or Hosiobadi Monti, but a Manute Ologa Bastobataro Sandhani among Samanaka Ro Dorsonata Procutere with a Bepti self, self Jota Atmara Dorsonatilla among Samane Kohutle with a Ajon Pactiro Kataba, Jon Sufism Rajon Pactiro Katakuajaiti. I'll say Pactiro Katatita Procutere. The Amor self da emiti hobo, Juta Procutareco, Jotara Sata Hobo, Kalibute, Habo Probonata Nare, Nijoko Hore, the Basri, or Abinon Korobi, John Chintare, Kalib Habo Probonata Cabola Ute Poktiba, the devotion. Our Sri Amor Marufai Cotton Tea, the Sri or Abinda Procutare, Caspire, John Mahan, you know. Santo Ebon Sadoko Tile, Darsonico, Totobit, Obinoba Gupta, Sukotan the Procuta Restri or Robindo, Tankarabut Atmo Bondu Hisabare, Obinoba Guptanku on Hoba Koritan, Kanki Kasmir Soibizimbre, Sri Orobinan Koro, Satanaro, Alotana Halabale, One Kota Pode, Sri Orobindo upon Manjanitibe, Sepra Uniso Panch Mosere Kasmir Asitib. सेटी जों शंकराचार्य हिल अछि सेटी जाइतले तापर ओटे कविता बि से ता उपर लेखि चंती एवं मनोज बाबू तांकर बायोग्राफी रे विषय आलोचना करि चंती तो कश्मीर शैविजम रे कश्मीर शैव पथ रे जो डायनामिक कन्ससनेस रो कथा कहा जाय छि सेटा श्री अरविंद को अनेक भाबरे प्रभावित करि छि बोली अनेक श्री अरविंद को अनुभव करथिबा साधक एवं दार्शनिक माने कहंती एवं यहाँ सही तो जे श्री अरविंद एवं इकबाल प्रकृतरे आमरो ए पृथ्वीटा हि ईश्वरंतर क्षेत्र एवं ताकु बुझिबा को हेले नागार्जुन जो विराट बौद्ध चिंतक जे कहितले संसार इज निर्वाण अर्थात ए संसार हि निर्वाण एवं से कहउचंती जे प्रकृतरे हेवन ता कोंठी अछि हेवन ता ए आमरो मास्टर एकाहट को कथा से उदाहरण दोथले आउ जने चिंता को कथा कहउतले जे तुमे जत्ते बेले प्रकृति रे हेवन को जीवा को चाहुचो तेनु निज भीतर जो अंत गभीर तम प्रदेश अछि ता भीतर को गले हि आमे स्वर्ग रो स्पर्श अनुभव करि पाइ आउ 
इकबाल एवं श्री अरविंद जो परंपरा जो परंपर रे आम जन्म हेचु ताकू बुझीबा एवं ता सहित गुटे समीक्षात्मक साधना रे आम केमिति संश्लिष्ट हे परबा से कथा कहछु आउ उभय श्री अरविंद एवं इकबाल निचेन कर जो कथा की सुपरमैन सुपरमैन विषय रे श्री अरविंद बत लेखिछंती आउ से कहउछंती जे नीचे प्रकृत रे एटा इकबाल आमर महामारुफ भाई को कहबा कथा जे नीचे प्रकृत रे तांकर सुपरमैन ता भी केवल सेहाय नथिला ए क्षेत्र रे आनंद कुमार स्वामी से नीचे विषय रे जो प्रबंध टि लेखिछंती ताकु से उद्धार करूछंती एवं निजर अध्ययन मारुफ भाई कर निजर अनुभव रे से कहउछंती नीचे इज ए गॉड इंटॉक्सिकेटेड मैन अर्थात नीचे ही प्रकृत रे जने ईश्वर माने दंशित आत्मा से ईश्वर दंशन गुटे अलग प्रकार ईश्वर दंशन आ तेनो ए जो तापरे रोल ऑफ इंडिविजुअल व्यक्ति रो उभय श्री अरविंद एवं इकबाल कर दर्शन एवं साधना रे व्यक्ति को भूमिका आ आत्मा केमिति ब्रह्म हे परिबो आ केमिति जे पुनश्च आमे हमर अहंकार को उत्तरण करी हमर जो सत्ता थी सेटा केमिति एक उच्चतर सत्ता हे परि यस सो मारु भाई प्लीज एक की प्रॉब्लम ऑफ नाहिलिज्म व्हिच व्हिच शे हाइडगर एंड डेरिडा एंड ऑल ग्रेट थिंक दिस पोस्ट मॉडर्न फिलोसोफर्स हैव बीन इन द वे रिस्पोंडिंग इन देयर ओन वे one of the ways of overcoming nihilism is poetry and that has been a great key keynote of eastern traditions as well that's no wonder that both iqbal and arvind were great poets and the po- and how the poetic and the mystical and the religious come together that should in that should in a way be able to that should be in a way key to overcome nihilism i think heidegger's idea of meditative thinking or return of the poets that poets will show their path of the fish to gods that comes to the same end now in iqbal if we read it closer nihilism is overcome by the burning for the meeting and not meeting with the beloved the iqbal will never meet the beloved but the quest is perpetual by being open to the call of the other as for example levinas would put it by being receptive by negating the ego that seeks some other meaning then the meaning will discovers when the ego receives the back iqbal has a great book on the mysteries of selflessness as well remuze be khudi and the inside of the other is a projection of the self for its unfoldment of its at play so to speak so for iqbal there is no real other the other has been projected by the self that's why in iqbal's scheme there is ultimately role for tolerance and we can't fight on religious and ideological grounds that is very important point to, to be noted god forms the horizon of the self as it is affirmed to the extent of god's proximity is achieved this underscores iqbal's other centrism in fact a whole post postmodern project is to speak for the other that's why iqbal and arbid both come here for him the self gets further realization of becoming open to love by witnessing itself in the presence of god the other iqbal speaks of the garden of music of beauty of intoxication of love and he gets access to them by opening himself up to reality by transcending the cunning of conceptual intellect that poses dualities that separates or pushes us to the narrow cocoon of the self failing to love and that is what constitutes hell from which great postmodern and modern thinkers want us to have an exit no dualism is no need to comprehend but try to dissolve in the mystery in that great love let us read few lines from one of his greatest poems it is considered in a way the greatest poem in urdu literature masjid e qurtuba for you know that spans that great mosque which was built by muslims now see what iqbal says about love مرد خدا کا عمل عشق سے صاحب فروغ عشق ہے اصل حیات بوت ہے اس پر حرام تند سبکسیر اگرچہ زمانے کی راہ 
عشق خود ایک سیل ہے سیل کو لیتا ہے تھام عشق کی تقویم میں اسی رواں کے سوا اور زمانے بھی ہیں جن کا نہیں کوئی نام عشق دم جبریل عشق دل مصطفیٰ عشق خدا کا رسول عشق خدا کا کلام عشق کی مستی سے ہے پیکر گل تاب ناپ عشق ہے سہوائے خام عشق ہے کاسو کرام دائی عشق فقی ہے حرم عشق امیر جنود عشق ہے ابن سبیل اس کے ہزاروں مقام This is how he sings, I think, in every, here and there you will find the theme of love cropping up in the heart. But he's clear that we never, we never meet God. We are never, never dissolved in God. So our journey is perpetually, we have, we have to go forward. Now, it ha- now see, he's one of his great ghazals in Bali Jibri, among the opening ghazals. But he says, گیسو تابدار کو اور بھی تابدار کر خوش و خرد شکار کر کلب و نظر شکار ساو اربندو وڈ فار ایگزامپل ٹرائی ٹو گو ٹو دا سپر ابنٹل فرام دا ریشنل اینڈ دا مینٹ عشق بھی ہو حجاب میں حسن بھی ہو حجاب میں یا تو خود آشکار ہو یا مجھے آشکار کر تو ہے محیط بے کرا میں ہوں ذرا سی آپ بھی ہو یا مجھے ہم کنار کر یا مجھے بے کنار ہی در ڈریسنگ گاڈ باغ بہشت سے مجھے حکم سفر دیا تھا کہ کار جہاں دراز ہے اب میرا انتظار there are many levels of paradise so one of the one of the heavens is of temporal duration it is different from the what we call the paradise of the essence just mystics or saints leave the station of love now why is he called to be read when why why he how he is able to appropriate all that great text texts or that great tradition see aziz ahmad in his iqbal nay tashkil observes i quote after having read all of iqbal's poetry one feels obliged to read a lot around him to understand him for example rumi nietzsche bergson al-jili greek philosophy ancient hindu philosophy modern Indian philosophy german latin and english poetry persian and urdu ghazal and after having read all of this when you come back to iqbal you feel you have yet to read him. a lot quote and this intertextuality makes it well hard to fix or frame in absolutist or ideological terms in any system he built heavily on the other texts that the quran requires to be read besides itself including cosmic quran what we call quran in taqwin the signs on the horizon this universe is called the cosmic quran in fact the written quran invites us to that cosmic quran and these two things should correspond Sarsid, Great Sarsid was all, always trying to uh, argue this point. And he, Iqbal, is for reading the signs of God in history, in psycho-spiritual phenomena. One, and he was in a way open to the parapsychology and all those investigations. He, he even once compared Prophet to a scientist who was interested in exploring the paranormal. And I'm just trying to remember that a great The key idea of Aramundo is that integral yoga, where whole, where whole life becomes yoga. All life is sacred. There is no dualism between the sacred and the profane. Iqbal makes this point very clear when he comments about the idea of mosque, that whole earth is a mosque. And then he comments that the scientist in the act of, scientist in, in a way, in the, who is observing something in the lab, is a mystic in the act of prayer. And in fact, he observed one of the great He quoted Iqbal, he quoted also Whitehead. Whitehead's statement, we, we know Whitehead was also a mystic. Whitehead had said the ages of faith are the ages of rationalism. So that higher rationalism, which is not in a way against uh, what we should call that intellect-centered um, tradition, that is not in a way obsessed with a very small, narrowly defined reason that modernity tried to do, that has been in a way a, 
Iqbal also said that the great movement of the modern world, Islam would deeply appreciate it. Islam is in fact in a way inner unfolding of that. That's why Iqbal was so open to the new, to the open to the new things. And he once observed that whatever you do, if you do, if you do new things, that is, it, that, that is its own, in a way, virtue. One can, so one can't finish reading Iqbal and he becomes open-ended quest instead of finish your real as a vision. So this is what Iqbal invites us to this open-ended vision, open-ended quest. Iqbal is all ears, ever seeking newer horizons, never ready for union or settling at any station, ever striving to approximate the unattainable or supremely transcendent, though he lives in that imminent infinite as well. Iqbal, while every inch of poor old Muslim honors great sages, saints, philosophers, religions, and most of the secular figures of the non-Islamic world. In fact, he has a great Persian text, Javed Nama, where he engages with all great non-Muslim many of the iconic non-Muslim figures in heaven, and there is a great discourse with them. So I can't go into those details. Uh, Iqbal initiated many debates to which Arabindo contributes, for example. One of the key debates is, there, then I will try to in a way, wrap it up. Iqbal's key point is man lives in tension with the other, and life of ego is this tension and this never ceases. Poetry and philosophy keep wonder alive, and life becomes a question that has no given or final answer. The great poem, the true poem, Tanhai, and so many other in this similar vein. And Lala is Sahrai, Lala is Sahrai, is that the great poem? I was just not remembering properly. Batka hua rahi mein, batka hua rahi tu. He compares himself that to the Papa Tathet. He prays for that Khamashi, Sarmasti. I think all those great virtues which poets have, which great mystics who have always preached more silence than words. In fact, the postmodern thinkers have pointed to the word, to the silence that was punctured by the word, the word, the silence that was before the word. And mysticism is trying to recollect that science. And that is where all conflict seeds, all ideological, religious conflict seeds. neither found Mullah nor Brahman. There only God resides. One must learn to live with a question or as the question, as Eric Wagelin, for example, put it. So, if postmodern thought, since we are reading both Iqbal and Arabindu in the postmodern times, we live in postmodern times, if postmodern thought is read as a pagan rejection of transcendence, absolutization of relativism, impossibility of knowledge and access to liberating meaning or truth or fashionable obsessions to the notion of the death of God, as most Muslim and indo and critics of it would have it, Iqbal launched a war against it as a new idol of the West. In fact, one of his great books is titled Zarbik Kaleem, that is war against the, it's a trap, war against the modern world. But then Iqbal is himself a great in a way, modern soul. But then modern has not been a modernist, a particular post-enlightenment notion of the reason and enlightenment project. Iqbal is deeply critical of that. And Iqbal was once saying that to find a sufficient tradition of the universe, that is the great challenge of the world. And for that, I think if we, we need to read, if we read, but if we read postmodernism as a quasi-mystical, other-centric, justice-centric, wonder-centric, art-inflected, compassion-oriented, open-ended quest. Iqbal has something to say in which philosophers as diverse as Heidegger, Levinas and Derrida, and the post-secular, post-theological world would be interested. We know for Derrida, justice can never be done, but we must. it must be our approximate. Uh, for Levinas, the other is what gives the identity to the self. Other is everything. We are infinite. We, our obligations are infinite towards that. 
And we know Altai is that postmodern in a way theologian who interpreted Buddhism and more Christianity in, in a many it's fundamental orientation to the to be open towards compassion. So I think I should maybe stop here, then we can take questions if Anantaji agrees. I have no issues of or if you wish. Thank you. Thank you, Maruk Bhai. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all life is a question. So, it is in that sense the mask, the cosmic Quran is a question to realize. So, thank you. I'll take again some minutes to translate it into Odia, then invite uh, our dear and respected friend Richard to give his thoughts, and we will be in dialogue. Amaro Bhai Boni Mane. Maruk Pai Jonkha Kohile, the Amovitre do Nasti Bada Joichi, Nihilism, Nihilism the Procurator Cabal of Nasti Bada Nue, what a Gibonado Jong Tich or Tonai, Empty Jong Habana Zetabra Asse, Setabra Kobitahi, Podbihi, Amuku, Taku Otikromo Koribaku, Sahajakore, Ebong Uboyo, Sri Orobindo, Ebong Ikbal Korojo, Tanko Satanare Jong Kobita. आउ से काहे प्रकृति रे एको उत्तरण गुटे अतिक्रम र आम निज भितरे जो नास्तिवाद आ नकारात्मकता तार एको अतिक्रमण र पथ एवं एई अतिक्रमण पथ रे कवि हि प्रकृति रे गुटे प्रकार एको ध्यानशील चिंता यात्री हुए एवं सेटा को बुझेबा को मारुफ हमरो हाइडिगर को कथा को प्रख्यात गभीर दार्शनिक मार्टिन हाइडिगर जे मेडिटेटिव थिंकिंग बा गुटे ध्यानमूलक चिंता कथा कहिचंती एवं हाइडिगर मध्य से मो बुझे आपन को आउथर कहुतली से जर्मन रो फ्राइबर्ग बली गुटे शहर अछि जोंटा की ब्लैक माउंटेन्स पाखरे अवस्थित फ्राइबर्ग शहर रो मात्र 5 मिनिट करे से ब्लैक माउंटेन को जाय जुए मेडिटेटिव थिंकिंग सहित गुटे माउंटेन थिंकिंग to think like a mountain, the Parbata Hori, Amekemiti, Chintakori Pariba. Abong Ekatre, Prokutre Bhagavan Kie, Bhagavan Ho Chanti, Se Eko Amoro, Atmaro, Eko Diganto. Abong Se Amoro Atmati, Prokutre Purnofe, Premo Dwara. Abong Ame Amoro Jo intellect, the Buddhira Jo would a Chatura Tarahichi. से बुद्धि र चतुरता को आमे अतिक्रम कर एवं एई अतिक्रमण रे जेते सब द्वेत मान रही छि तसे सब डुअलिज्म रही छि ताको आमे अतिक्रम कर एवं इकबाल कर धारा रे इकबाल कर साधना रे जे इन कैलेंडर ऑफ लव देयर इज नो टाइम माने प्रेम र जो खाता रे प्रकृति रे समय किछि नाही आ आमे भगवान को खोजुथला बेले भगवान को पाइबा को व्याकुल त होथला बेले भगवान का पाखरे जे गुटे लुण जेमिति पानी रे पके देले से हजि जाय केवल सेमिति एकमात्र ईश्वर अनुभवर कथाती नहि आमे भगवान को आमे नीचे रूपांतरित हे कि भगवान को केमिति आमे अनुभव करबा खाली माने लुणटा केमिति पानी रे डिजॉल्व करि जाउछि सेटा एकमात्र कथा नहि एवं भगवान भी जत्ते बड़े आम को डाक्टर की स्वर्ग को से आउ जने मिस्टिक कर कथा कहुतले से कह रे कह रे नाही मु वर्तमान जाइ परबि नी काहे कि मोर किछि काम अछि ओए तो तांकु तांको उद्यान रे फुलटी रे पानी दबा को छिबो सेति नै से कहिले देखो मोर वर्तमान स्वर्ग जीवार नै ओतिके पानी दे दिए तेनु ए जो हेवन प्रकृत रे केते प्रकार स्वर्ग रहै छि ना मारो दुई प्रकार कथा कहुतले the heaven as temporal relation. Gute amon jo samaya saito rohi chu. Sei samaya saito rohi ki ame kemiti gute sorgo juk to hai pari. A gute hoychi paradise of essence. The prakrutre saratattura eko sorgo. A ikbalankaro e jo gafira bahu jatra. A jemti se kauthle tankaro padya a mysticism. अमर गभीर वास्तवता रा जो अनुभव धर्म एवं विज्ञान एई सब को बुझिबा को हेले आइजाज अहमद बली आउ जने गभीर समीक्षा करचंती से कहुतले प्रकृति रे 
इकबाल को आम जिते पढ़ले भी जमी अपढ़ा रही जमी श्री अरविंद को आम जिते पढ़ले भी आपढ़ा रही जाती जो इंटरटेक्चुआलीटी गोटे सह शास्त्रीयता इकबाल को बुझाक हेले आम को बहुत परंपरा को बुझाक पड़ा जमी आम प्राचीन भारतीय दर्शन वेद उपनिषद कुरान आसलामिक दर्शन तांगे जर्मान दर्शन आधुनिक दर्शन तेणु इकबाल जो कौन समग्र पृथ्वीटा ही हूँ एक मस्जिद से मारूफ भाई अनुभव में श्री अरविंद जो इंटीग्राल योग अल लाइफ इज योग आम को मन रखे आ ह्वैट हार्ड को कथा भी मत कहले तो इस्लाम प्रकृत इस्लाम को एक जमी आम बेद को उपनिषद को एक साधारण मार्ग हिसाब से जो आम ग्रहण करूचु ठीक सेमती जो मैंने इस्लाम को एक साधना पथ हिसाब से ग्रहण करती इस्लामा प्रकृत आमर अंतर विकास इनर अनफोल्डमेंट रथटीए आई सृष्टि यही दृष्टि इस्ला इकबाल प्रकृत से एक इनफाइनाइट मोमेंट भितर रुते अनंत मुहूर्त भितर से रुते आकबाल अनेक प्रश्न आम सहित सी आम आगे से रखी एवं जो प्रश्न मान श्री अरविंद साधन आम देखा पाऊ आई गोटे प्रश्न हूँ आधुनिकता जो कथा आम आगे आलोचना कर आधुनिकता प्रकृत आम आगे एक आह्वान खाली आधुनिकता को निंदा करदे जे आम आह्वान मान रूपातर घटव ता सहित जो आम वाक्य आम साधन आम जीवन आम कवित जो एक खामोश एक नीरवता एक नीरवतार जो साधना जो वाक्य सहित जो नीरवता जो नीरवतार ही वाक्य शब्द भितर जो नीरवता छुपिक रही प्रकृत मुंड टेकवा चाहूँ गोटे छोट कड़ हिसाब से फुटवा चाहूँ कि आम ताकि प्रकृत शुणु कि इस्लाम इकबाल कहते मन मनर जो दुनिया रे मूला रही ब्राह्मण मान रही जो कथा आमको कबीर को मन पकई दिए आर्तमान जो आधुनिक समय आधुनिक चिंतार जो मौलिक सीमितता ताकू अतिक्रम कर जो पोस्ट मॉडर्न बा उत्तर आधुनिक चिंता मान रही से चिंताद मानक भितर जो गभर जी मान रही जमी डेरीडा एवं लेनास डेरीडा कौन आम समस्ते न्याय कथा सब बड़े मन में रख आम चिंता एवं कर्म जदिओ आम आम जीवन संपूर्ण न्यायवंत नई पारे कितु न्याय कथा आम सब रखा जमी लेनास कौन आम सब अन्यता अन्यर तार भावना कण अन्यर चिंता कण सी आमर निजस्व चिंता ठार आम निजक जहाँ भावुँ अन्न विषय अन्यर जो उपस्थित से सब प्राथमिकता अपेक्षा करे आउ जो उत्तर आधुनिक चिंताद मान जो मैंने करुणार कौथा कौन जो मैंने कंपेसन रहा कौन से कंपेसन रृष्टि को धर्म को विचार करेणु यही दृष्टि इकबाल को भितर एक उत्तर आधुनिकता रही यही दृष्टि आम श्री अरविंद चिंतार जे आधुनिकतार सीमितता और अतिक्रमण को अनुभव कर सो विथ रेंडरिंग ऑफ मारूफ थॉट्स, सो इट इज विथ जॉय, आई इनवाइट रिचार्ड टू काइंडली शेयर योर थॉट्स। थैंक यू अनफर्चुनेटली I joined the meeting late because uh, I had been invited to to join this meeting on the 27th, which is Tuesday. I thought I was going to have two days to prepare to say something about Iqbal. Unfortunately, I, I haven't had any time at all now, and um, I know very little about about Iqbal. But um, the topic interests me. Uh, very much and in fact a, uh, at one time i was planning to study iqbal but never did i picked up a, a copy of his reconstruction of uh, religious thought in islam and uh, intended uh, 
to read it, but uh, I, and perhaps I will now because I can see that this comparison of Shirobindo and Iqbal is really a very interesting and also a very important one. I, I like to do these kinds of uh, comparisons of Sri Aurobindo with other thinkers. I'm a scholar of Sri Aurobindo myself, so I always know Sri Aurobindo much better than the person that I compare him with. But I've done a number of such comparisons, and I always found that, that they're an extremely interesting way to uh, bring out, well, particularly in the case of comparing Asian thinkers. I've worked on uh, comparing Shurabindo with uh, Chinese philosophers, for example, uh, modern Chinese philosophers. And the, uh, what makes that a, a meaningful comparison is that they face very similar conditions. They were responding to uh, colonialism, Western imperialism, the, the rise of the West and the temporary decline, it appeared, of their own civilizations. And they responded in uh, very similar ways in many cases. And one can see the same thing in the case of Shrebindo and Iqbal. What both achieved was, uh, well, it had a number of dimensions. Uh, one is a synthesis of East and West, a synthesis of the thought of their own tradition with that of the modern West. Also, uh, a, an engagement with both tradition and modernity. It's more or less a different way of looking at the same thing, but involving a transformation both of the tradition and of modernity. So neither, uh, Iqbal, nor, certainly not Shrebindo, anything I say about Iqbal, I, I, I can't be sure about, but could be called a, a traditionalist, certainly not merely a traditionalist. On the other hand, they were deeply rooted in a tradition, uh, but also deeply engaged with the modern West. And so their dialogue tended to be between uh, an Asian tradition, whether uh, Uh, Hindu, Muslim, Chinese, Confucian, or, or whatever in different uh, parts of Asia. There was a, an Asian response to the onslaught of Western modernity, which shared similar features, which I think would be uh, uh, interesting to explore in this case, as well as in some others that I've actually worked on. Um, I did, uh, thinking that I had a couple of days to prepare for this, I started to go through Iqbal's reconstruction of religious uh, thought in Islam. And I immediately found very interesting points, for example, on the second page, a discussion of reason and intuition in which uh, Iqbal, like uh, Shrebindo, refers to uh, Bergson, Henri Bergson. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, there are many things like this. The, certainly the engagement with Nietzsche is very important for both as, uh, as we've heard, the idea of, of the Superman. There are many common themes uh, that it could, could be explored and I have the feeling that the deeper uh, one went into Iqbal's philosophy, the more one could find that uh, could be fruitfully compared with uh, Sri Aurobindo. Uh, I'm not in a position to go into that really much uh, at the moment, but there are certain things that have come up in, in what we've been hearing. For example, the, uh, the, the idea that Shurabindo's critique of uh, Shankara, of Vedanta, as it was commonly understood, uh, at least his under understanding of Vedanta as Shankar's Advaita Vedanta as a world negating philosophy can certainly be uh, uh, compared with uh, what we were hearing about uh, 
Iqbal's critique of Sufism, of similarly, not the true Sufism, but a certain trend in, in Sufism, a certain type of, uh, of Sufism. And what is in common between Iqbal and Shurik, you know, there is the uh, affirmation of the individual, the importance of the individual is very central for uh, for Shrivindo, uh, for both of them. And so these are some of the themes. When Shrivindo um, gave his message for the uh, 15th of August, 1947, he talked about five dreams which he had had. It was a, a famous message for those who know Shrivindo that was broadcast on All India Radio on Indian Independence Day. The first of the dreams was just then being fulfilled, namely the liberation uh, of India, India's freedom. The second was the resurgence of Asia. This is the one that particularly interests me because Asia, uh, certainly I've, I've been looking at how that uh, includes uh, the Far East, China, Japan, the, the rest of the Far East and Southeast Asia, but also West Asia. And Shrivindo regarded the resurgence of Asia uh, as he, although he was well aware of the great differences between different Eastern civilizations, still he often spoke of East and West in terms of uh, commonalities among Eastern civilizations, which can be contrasted with West, uh, Western civilization. Although, of course, one has all of the same elements in, in the Western uh, tradition as well. But uh, in any case, this resurgence of Asia is the, is the context in which I find it interesting to juxtapose figures uh, like Shurabindo and Iqbal, each of whom worked within their own tradition. In Shurabindo's case, although he was not uh, a Hindu as such, he worked in broadly what could be called the Hindu tradition. And uh, Iqbal, of course, in, in, within the uh, Islamic tradition. Um, it's, I think, quite legitimate to focus on one's own tradition, and yet each of them was, as um, Maruf said at the beginning, I think, uh, a global thinker. Both of them are very good examples of what um, has been called uh, rooted global philosophy. That means a philosophy that engages with world thought and not just with a, a, a particular philosophical tradition. Uh, as in the case of most Western philosophers uh, who largely confine themselves within their own Western uh, tradition. And uh, very few Western philosophers have a, a very deep knowledge of non-Western philosophical traditions. So what uh, can be called global philosophy has been much better exemplified on the whole by Asian thinkers because partly due to force of circumstances, they were compelled to uh, enter deeply into the Western tradition as well into their, as, as into their own. So you have very few Western thinkers who have an equally deep knowledge of any non-Western tradition that could be compared with either uh, Shurabindo's or Iqbal's knowledge of, of Western thought. And so you have a much better synthesis, a wider synthesis very often in these Asian thinkers than you can find in really in any, almost any uh, Western thinker, uh, uh, particularly if you speak of the great original uh, and influential philosophers in the West. There are many Western scholars, of course, who've made deep studies of Indian or other Asian cultures, but uh, creative thinking in the West has largely um, been restricted to its own tradition to a much greater extent than Asian thought, where this aspect of global thinking and engagement with 
with uh, uh, world uh, thought, I think is much more developed than you usually find um, in the West. So, uh, of course, what was missing, I think, in both cases, Rubindo, although he said uh, he certainly was not guilty of any kind of uh, Islamophobia, uh, did not actually know very much uh, and didn't find it necessary to include uh, much more than passing references to Muslim uh, thought in um, in uh, his own philosophy. So, and I think, and this is also true if you look at Chinese uh, philosophers, for example, each uh, tends to be in a dialogue with the West and not, and much less, to a much less extent uh, with other uh, Asian cultures. There are exceptions. Uh, uh, there was, Sri was certainly a pan-Asianist in sentiment but in practice, he largely took India as, as representing Asia, or representing the East. So, um, as I said, I would have liked to be able to go more deeply into this topic, but I won't be able to say anything specifically about uh, Sri Aurobindo and Iqbal. Now, maybe I should stop here and we can see if we can have uh, some kind of discussion. Thank you, Richard, <laughs> and uh, in a very inspiring way, also cultivating certain deep questions as uh, you presented to us. Again, with your generosity, I'll take a few minutes to translate <laughs> you to Odia, and then we'll initiate the conversation. Our brother, Richard, very Sundara Kathati Shri Kohile, Kohile. Sri Aurobindo, Tankara Darsan along the Bono Saito, Richard Procurta Tankara Gibonoku, Tasaito Sanjuk Kapari Rakhunti, Richard Americaru, Ojano Kari Prai, Chalis Versala, Chalis to Toversala, Sri Aurobinda Stromre, Ebisre, Sadhana, Ponchin Tanako, the College is Sri Aurobindonku, Onyo, Chinta Sadhakanko Saito Sangohe, Habiba. एक भारी महत्वपूर्ण उते रत्न आविष्कार रो एक अनुभव विशेष करी अन्य एशियो दर्शनिक मानक को सहित एशियन दार्शनिक मानक को सहित काहे कि ए जेंती इकबाल एवं श्री अरविंद एवं चाइना रो जो दार्शनिक मुगेशन मुजेशन तांको उपर विचार रे काम करथंती से माने प्रकृत रे जे जो प्रकार आह्वान मान को सब सम्मुख कले कॉलोनियलिज्म उपनिषद इंपीरियलिज्म ए मान को भीतर जो सब आह्वान सृष्टि करितला आ आधुनिकता रा जो एक प्रकार आक्रमण सेई परिप्रेक्ष्य रे से माने उत्तर खोजुतले उते सर्जनात्मक उत्तर खोजुतले से उत्तर खोजबा प्रक्रिया रे उते समन्वय आसुतले से समन्वय होची प्राच्य एवं पाश्चात्य रा समन्वय एवं आधुनिकता एवं परंपरा रा समन्वय एवं उभय इकबाल एवं श्री अरविंद निचेंको दर्शन सहित से भाबी चलती एवं श्री अरविंद नंकर एवं उभय इकबाल एवं अरविंद नंकर जो सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल मते बड़ा कथा एई सब सहित अफर्मेशन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल से कथा कहले 15 अगस्त 19 सत्तालिस दे भारत वर्षों स्वाधीनता रा जन्म दिन रे श्री अरविंद जो बातखाती दे इतले सत्रे पुनः सतंकर पांचोटी सपनों को था कोई चुनती जो उतरे भारत वर्षों स्वाधीनता आउ द्वितीय को था ती चला विसर्जन सब एशिया ना एशिया रे को पुनः जाकरो एक था कोहिला बड़े विचार भारी महत्वपूर्ण एशिया रो पुनर्जागरण विषय रे कहुतले किंतु तांकर निजर जो चिंतन अटि मूलत भारत सहित युक्त हेतला अन्य एशियो दर्शन अन्य एशियो संग्राप विषय रे हेतु से सेते बेसि करि पारि नथि आ तापरे तनु एई जो आउटे कथा ते से कहिले पारि महत्वपूर्ण कथा उभय इकबाल एवं श्री अरविंद जो परंपरा रे जन्म ग्रहण करथिले जदियो श्री अरविंद निजकु तथाकथित हिंदू भाबरे देखनथिले किंतु जो हिंदू मूल 
ଭୂମିରେ ଯେଉଁ ସବୁ ଚିନ୍ତନ ଦର୍ଶନ ତା ସହିତ ଭାବି ତାର ଉତ୍ତରଣ ପାଇଁ ସମୀକ୍ଷା ଏବଂ ଉତ୍ତରଣ ପାଇଁ ସେ ସାଧନା କରିଛନ୍ତି ଯେମିତି ଥିବା ଏହି ପ୍ରକ୍ରିୟାରେ ସେମାନେ ପ୍ରକୃତରେ ଏକ ତୃଣମୂଳ ଯୁକ୍ତ ଏକ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଦାର୍ଶନିକ ଏକ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଚିନ୍ତକ ହେଇଛନ୍ତି କିନ୍ତୁ ଏସିଆରୁ ଯେଉଁମାନେ ଚିନ୍ତା କରିଛନ୍ତି ସେମାନେ ପାଶ୍ଚାତ୍ୟକୁ ପଢ଼ିଛନ୍ତି କିନ୍ତୁ ଅନେକ ପାଶ୍ଚାତ୍ୟ ଦାର୍ଶନିକ ମାନେ ସେମାନେ ଆଉ ପାଶ୍ଚାତ୍ୟରୁ ଉର୍ଦ୍ଧ୍ଵ ପାଶ୍ଚାତ୍ୟକୁ ଛାଡ଼ି ଅନ୍ୟ ଦର୍ଶନ ବେଶି ପଢ଼ିନାହାନ୍ତି ତେଣୁ ଯେଉଁ ଗ୍ଲୋବାଲ୍ ଫିଲସଫି ଯେଉଁ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଦର୍ଶନଟା ପ୍ରକୃତରେ ଏସିଆରୁ ହିଁ ଦାର୍ଶନିକ ମାନେ ଯାହା ସବୁ କାମ କରିଛି କିନ୍ତୁ ଏଇଟା ବହୁତ ବିଡ଼ମ୍ବନା ଯଦିଓ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଦର୍ଶନର ଅନେକ କଥା ଏସିଆରୁ ହେଇଛି କିନ୍ତୁ ଆମେ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଦର୍ଶନ ଗ୍ଲୋବାଲ୍ ଫିଲସଫିରେ କେବଳ ପାଶ୍ଚାତ୍ୟ ଲୋକମାନଙ୍କର କଥା ଆମେ ଜାଣୁଛୁ ସୋ ଦିସ୍ ୱାଜ୍ ଏ ବ୍ରିଫ୍ ରେଣ୍ଡରିଂ ଇନ୍ ଟୁ ଓଡ଼ିଆ ସୋ ୱି ଡିଅର୍ ଫ୍ରେଣ୍ଡସ୍ ୱି ହାଭ୍ ହାଡ୍ ଏ ଫିଷ୍ଟ ଅଫ୍ ଇନ୍ସାଇଟ୍ସ ସୋ ନାଓ ଲେଟ୍ ଆସ୍ ଏନ୍ଗେଜ୍ ଇନ୍ କନଭରସେସନ୍ସ ୱିଥ୍ ବୋଥ୍ ରିଚର୍ଡ ଏଣ୍ଡ 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 ମାରୁ ଏଣ୍ଡ ଆଇ ଇନଭାଇଟ୍ ଫ୍ରେଣ୍ଡସ୍ those who would like to raise a questions or thoughts uh, please put it in the chat and i request randeep to also take note of it at the same time we would invite a few friends to initiate the conversation and given the paucity of time i request friends to initially take 2 to 3 minutes to uh, share their thoughts let me invite professor mira chakraborty please Thank you, Ananta. Uh, am I off? You can hear me? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, to Professor uh, Maruf Shah, congratulations, and to Edward for your uh, remarks. I just <coughs> have to... And, and Mira, Miraji, he yeah. is not Edward, he is Richard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm you, extremely you, sorry. I, I no, apologize. No, you, you you met him. You have both met together in in Bangalore in 2016 okay, in our seminar. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 I'm extremely sorry, uh, Richard. No, it's so, okay. So it's okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, one thing is that uh, uh, when Maruf uh, says that there is this. Uh, Uh, condemnation or critique of maya in shankara i think we will also have to uh, take it because shankara makes it very clear uh, that we have to understand uh, it as a dualistic sketch of the two aspects of self so maruf uh, i think we'll have to see it from that point of view uh, it's the comparison which you rightly said it is a comparison with the world self is in 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 a Uh, in in a state in a certain state of jivatma and paramatma that is one thing the other thing that you mentioned abhinava gupta's uh, philosophy of desire the desire is there of the maheshwara the shiva to create the world and therefore you negate uh, uh, in kashmir shaivism there is the negation of maya and abhinava gupta comes back through his uh, theory of pratyabhigna where the self is recognized because abhigna abhigna is cognition so pratyabhigna prati abhigna he he's come back to the self so i think there the, this nuances must be uh, very much uh, reflected on clar- clarified the other thing is that uh, w- uh, what we find in nietzsche and then and aurobindo is about the superman i think all the mystics have uh, and rightly as uh, richard puts it that the not the western uh, thinkers are really not very well uh, <laughs> acquainted with the eastern thinkers and there are so many kinds of um, confusion that we uh, find but i i i feel that all these thinkers are asking a question you know kind of a self confrontation from self confrontation you go to self transcendence these mystics are asking us to put ourselves in question to seek a common horizon of of concern and that common horizon is the humanitarian concern this is what i would like to. thank you uh, ananta thank you and in a spirit of festivity of thinking if it is okay we request uh, maruf and richard to kindly meditate with these thoughts take a note of it and then we we'll invite a few other thoughts and then after a few we'll listen to you 
Now we have in us with us, I see from the list Muhammad Iqbal and Muhammad Sabir Azad, among others. So I request you to kindly share your thoughts. Okay, we have in the list Bandana Singh. Would you like to share some thoughts? Okay, and maybe now Devendra, in all days we have Devendra Tiwari at the last, and he's also a deep you know, traveler with philosophy and literature. Now, <laughs> Dr. Devendra, please. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Although uh, I don't have any question, but a few observations. And uh, as usual, I try to correlate uh, the thoughts uh, propounded by our esteemed speakers uh, with the different literature and different arts. So one uh, observation I have noted, uh, which was uh, delivered by uh, Dr. Maruf. Uh, sir said, the calendar of love, in the calendar of love, there is no time. And there is a uh, this line has a resemblance with one of the Bollywood song uh, and sung by Avijit, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the name. Na umr ki seema ho, na janma ka ho bandhan, koi jab pyar kare, so dekhe koi, uh, dekhe keval man. Yes, uh, so uh, definitely if they're uh, in the world, anywhere, at any corner, if somebody is there in the love, so there is no limitation of time, age, caste, creed, position. So uh, 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 this has been uh, one of my observation. Another, uh, it's... Uh, uh, one of the statement made by uh, 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 Dr. Richard, sir, uh, about Sri Aurobindo, Aurobindo's uh, was not of one continent. He was a cosmopolitan. He was a representative of the whole Asia. Yes, I do agree. Particularly, I have uh, read uh, his Savitri. And the universal appeal in Savitri uh, uh, tells loud and clear that Arvindo uh, cannot be bounded, his thoughts and his philosophy cannot be bounded uh, in limit of one culture and one community. Really, uh, he is a man of world. He is representative of pan world. So that's it, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Devendra. So now I request uh, Susri Appa, please. Okay, Susri Appa is taking some time. I request uh, Minati, please. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, actually, I came a little late. I was actually, I was thinking it is four o'clock. So I just missed the initial part, actually. So anyway, I uh, learned uh, from, I mean, there was very thank you, Dr. Professor Maruf Shah for that insightful deliberation. I mean, it was a light, lighted area for me. I learned so many things about uh, Iqbal. But one thing actually I would like to request him to explain a little bit more. He said no, he was unfragmented. How? I mean, a little bit more, uh, ex explain a little bit about that. And one more, another basic question I want to ask, that is what were his views on women's education and freedom? Where were the women in 
I mean, he has placed in his literature and philosophy. So that question I would like to ask. And um, as he was telling, the poetry actually helps to overcome the nihilism. So in that theme, I have a poetry if time is there later on, I will read. Thank you. Muebe, now I request uh, Sandhya Appa, please speak. Sandhya Appa. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Richard Kumaranek Shraddha Marubhengu. Uh, Aji, uh, तो कथा आलोचना करा गला म एक एत्र ओटी कथा बुझी परु छी जे हमें म जेंति श्रीवंदु को जेंति पढे बा बुझे हम हमर गुडे एमति मानसिकता विशेष कर म खत्र रे जे मु बाबु छी श्रीवंदु नहीं सब किछि जानि छी म ताको टु हमें सब किछि पाउ जे किंतु आज जे दु जन को मार पाई औ रिचर्डिंग को कथा हम जाई से मन जेंति एका सहित दु जन को भाबी पाउ छथि बा दु जन को पढी पाउ छथि सो के समय रे श्रीरंत जेमिति थॉट कथा जे माने चिंता करि चंती सेमिति आउ जने भी केही भाबी चंती एक कथाटा से माने एक संगर देखि पार चंती से माने एका सहित अनेक जन को गुरुत्व दे पार चंती आमे मु मो खेत्र से आई नि आमे साधारण श्रीरंत को ये कुछ माने पाक्षी आमे आगरे ही मोहन एही रहि छ किंतु एमिति सब को डायलॉग गुडा सुनिला परे ए सब आलोचना रे भागना ला परे मोर सेही धारणा गुडी को हमरो उडोटे धन्यवाद सो संध्या स्पीक्स दैट द होल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ टुडे जर्नी इज दैट सी यूज टू थिंक दैट श्री अरविंद इज एवरीथिंग and uh, she is not uh, deviating from that but she if he is feeling a call to read you know, other thinkers like uh, mahamad ikbal alama ikbal so ebe mu anurodh karu si now i request prabhati apa please Okay, Prabhati Appa is taking some time. Uh, Jagat Jyoti, Tapu Bhai. Tapu Bhai, okay. Now I request Santosh Bhai, please. Be Santosh Kumar Mishra from Bhuvaneshwar. He has translated uh, Karan Singh's Prophet of Indian Nationalism into Odia. So Santosh Bhai. Yes, uh, Ananda Bhai. Uh, good evening. Good, good evening to everyone. Uh, actually, in today's uh, meeting, I know many new things from both uh, Mr. Maruf and Mr. Richa. Uh, and uh, actually, this is a beautiful journey in uh, towards uh, knowing more about uh, uh, life and the world. Uh, however, I am also delighted to hear about poetry from Maru, so the, the significance of poetry in life. Uh, in that sense, uh, um, uh, if you like, I can read one of my poems, a very short poem. Uh, please, about, please like, read, Santos Bhai, please read. I, the title of my poem is My Poem. The name of my poem is My Poem. So I just uh, read it out. Uh, which stuff are you built in? What are your substances? How do you appeal to my respiration, palpitation, aspiration? Me aside, whom do you touch upon yet? Do you have the five elements and the purest ones, the letter explode, all of which I am built in? If yes, you must have a body temple, a life vibration, 
the mind imagination and what more do you have or are made of that it peers into my inner most emit its aroma around which dwells in and out of i am made of in and out of my wrist watch in and out of where i put pen or finger pen how oh, and why i and you become two how oh, and why i and you melt into a dot forgetting whether whether i create and raise you or you create and raise me or only soil and soul play a game i jerly pen in a paper i type in a word page then i and you mirror millions of images similes metaphors styles and contents the crawling toes of a caterpillar processing the rainbow wings to fly thank you all thank you santosh bhai so i see in the list uh, najia althap ahmad sanu kumar and tahir so i request you to please share some thoughts Okay, as you are taking time, I request Ranveer to kindly share your thought. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, very insightful lecture by uh, Dr. Maruf, and uh, I think I have uh, some question which he already explained in his uh, talk. about uh, iqbal's uh, philosophical influence uh, but i have one uh, question uh, it is uh, commonly alleged uh, both uh, uh, iqbal's approach as arvindos marsi arvindos approach uh, to the problem problems of humanity is a religious approach uh but uh, uh, you know now it is uh, with the uh, advent of this uh, uh, right wings uh, ideology they use uh, religion for the gain of power how uh, equals uh, uh, his ideas uh, you know public consciousness public can use Uh, because we can, of course, we can see if you read uh, Iqbal's uh, poetry, it is ever, it is, uh, uh, it does not correspond with narrow nationalism, rather deep patriotism. So, uh, and my second question is uh, how uh, Iqbal or Sir Arvindos, uh, you know, uh, can help us uh, in in. Uh, you know understanding uh, you know religion in a better way you know we can see the kind of approach dominant approach to see religion is uh, a kind of modernist approach you know a total separation of science and religion separation of intellect from institution so i just want to know his thought on this very question Ranveer, and uh, so now let us uh, move uh, to a dialogue. To this festivity of dialogue, I just wish to add uh, one thought. Uh, with gratitude to Richard, in your conversation, you referred to Sri Aurobindo's critique of Sankara and Vedanta, and uh, and as you have been traveling with this thought. For so long, and uh, if uh, you know, and, and that critique of Sankara and Vedanta, of course, was animated by the cultivation of a, another Vedanta. But uh, whether uh, Sri Aurobindo's journey with Sankara, and and whether Sankara himself uh, embodied that world negation to that extent, as Sri Aurobindo thought. Uh, associated this with sankar so now i invite maru to kindly share your thought and uh, please and then richard
just deal with the, the, the question, like illuminating questions. It, it will learn about by these questions. I think first the, the question that regarding Maya was raised. For instance, I wish if we, for example, have Mr. of Sean has explained in Shankara expedition. I think if we stick to that, we're better able to see that Abhino, that Arabino's critique of this Shankara is can't be in a way accepted. See, Maya or the divine art which expresses Atma according to indefinitely varied, varied moods, and of which avidya, the ignorance, which conceals Atma is a purely negative aspect, proceeds mysteriously from Atma itself, in the sense that Maya is a necessary consequence of Atma's infinity. This is what Shankar Acharya expresses by saying that Maya is without beginning. And second point that Shuan makes in this, Maya is both light and darkness at the same time. She is light in as much as being the divine art, she reveals the secret of Atma. She is darkness in as much as she conceals Atma. As darkness, she is ignorance, avidya. So the Maya, by that very fact, she is a divine art in the divine principle itself. So there are dual meanings of Maya. So, but it is definitely emphasis. There is only the difference of emphasis in Shankara and Abhinabhuti, for example. We would see he is more in a way, somehow, or for example, if you see in the Buddhist tradition as well, there is somehow, somehow an understanding that the world might elude us. That samsara, we might fall in those samsara, those nirvana is the depths of samsara. As Mahayana Buddhist is Nagarjuna and all the tradition is about and Zen Buddhism in a way builds upon that. But somehow we feel that for the most people, for most people, the net of the world, the samsara, the desire and all that, the more Randir, have we lost Maru? Yes, yes, we lost his connection. Meanwhile, we can invite uh, Richard, sir. Yes. So, Richard, please kindly <laughs> share mm -hmm. your thoughts. Okay. Um, on this question of Sri Aurobindo's critique of Shankara, that has to be understood in the context of Sri Aurobindo's own philosophy and the purpose of his argument with Shankara is to give a kind of purva paksha before presenting his own position. He admitted in some of his letters that Shankara might be interpreted differently. He was not a scholar uh, of Shankara and um, his interpretation of Shankara is not necessarily the only way that Shankara can be understood. Sri was also aware of that, but he was concerned with um, dealing with a certain tendency in Indian spirituality in the last few centuries, an otherworldly tendency towards sannyasa, asceticism, uh, of a life negating uh, trend in, in spirituality, which had certainly undermined the vitality of uh, Indian society compared with ancient times, the role of spirituality, of ancient uh, spirituality. He was dealing, he was addressing what he perceived to be um, a, a, an emphasis in Indian philosophy and spirituality, which he summed up in the figure of Shankara as popularly understood in his own time. If Shankara has been reinterpreted since then, that's fine. Uh, but it doesn't uh, really affect the point of Sri Aurobindo's major uh, debate with Shankara, which is central to the life divine 
Uh, there are two, two of the longest chapters of the life divine in or his debate with illusionism or Mayavada. He uh, refers to both Buddha and Shankara. Buddha, of course, can also be understood very differently from the uh, uh, reduction of Buddha's teaching to uh, escape from the world into nirvana. And Sri also acknowledged that. So I think that one has to understand his critiques of Shankara and, and also Buddha within the context of own, his own philosophy. And uh, primarily he was concerned with presenting his own vision and he, uh, he recognized elsewhere that there were that both Buddha and Shankara were very great uh, people who, who made great contributions and so I don't think it uh, one should uh, overemphasize his use of the uh, of the name of, of Shankara as representing the the position which which he was refuting in his argument in the life divine thank you richard thank you i saw uh, i saw bitu paul bitu paul uh, would you like to share some thought Okay, if not, so uh, I request Minati to please, uh, uh, I think Mira wants to share some thought. Mira, please. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, well, here I, we will have to, as a student of uh, uh, Sanskrit literature and philosophy, uh, what I also emphasize is that the whole uh, literature of commentaries, the bhashyas, uh, one after the other, must be very, uh, their, their nuances must be very well reflected. We have to reflect on those uh, traditions because the bhashya literature itself is the uh, a galaxy, you know, the, uh, it, it's the, it, is, it is the, I think, the uh, galaxy of scholars which we have. So uh, in nowhere Shankara says that it, it's a kind of relativism related to this world uh, that uh, and a kind kind of the wealth and the power which uh, which uh, overcomes uh, human uh, efficiency and goodness. Uh, it's from that angle that he has uh, he has not taken an extreme step to say that this is uh, that is why Radha Krishna made this point that Mayavada is not the only one which Shankara represents uh, or uh, tells. So that is that's why so he's asking us to confront the self. The, the question of Jivatma and Paramatma, he's, he's trying to uh, juxtapose these and say that if you are overtaken by wealth and power in this mundane world, then you really do not cross the horizon. So therefore I mentioned that it is a self confrontation to self transcendence. And from that angle, uh, uh, this is very right, Richard, that we have all our own perspectives to see and Aurobindo, I'm not trying to say that Aurobindo is what he has done is, the, uh, is something uh, uh, not accepted. It is because that is one part of dynamism. And these are the dynamisms which through which we have to, through, through this lens that which we have see and the creation there in the abhinava gupta i don't know what maruf uh, is, is, is is the desire of the shiva to create the whole world i went to kashmir to uh, present a world and i exactly argued against uh, shankara's mayavada i said how can there be uh, the world be a reflection my paper is published how can the world be and unless there is a uh, supportive uh, reality and, and just because if you are standing before the mirror, you see yourself, but you are true, you are the truth and the mirror is only reflecting. So this kind of a relationship is with Maya and the world and therefore uh, Maya is also quite authentic. That is what I prove, They're just uh, totally, uh, totally uh, opposed to the view of the Maya. Brother. Thank you. So, sorry to take so much time. Thank you, Ananta. Thank you, Mira. Yes, Dr. Maru sir has joined. So, okay, ask him to complete all the answers. Maru, <laughs> I think the good Lord <laughs> took you to heaven and brought it, <laughs> brought you to us. <laughs> oh.
okay as maruf is coming so in the meantime uh, you know we have jagajyoti who has rejoined jagajyoti tapu would you like to share a few lines jagajyoti okay now minati you please read your point just one minute ananta ananta yes please i said ananta you have uh, read so thoroughly on aurobindo so why don't you uh, please say something about it that's what i wanted to know so you know uh, as uh, so it is a it is a continued journey so at this point i think um, uh, you know this is an invitation at least for me to go deeper you know, and uh, to 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 realize deeper uh, sri aurobindo as richard invited us to see sri aurobindo acknowledged that he was not a total you know critic of sankara and he was presenting that in a way of emphasis so, so i wish to accept it as an invitation and then uh, take it further so now <laughs> i hope it is okay mira <laughs> you can go for an anthology <laughs> <laughs> yes this is what we are humbly praying that to take this opportunity to co-edit a book on uh, Sri Aurobindo and Alama Iqbal. And yeah. uh, so we invite you to kindly bless us uh, with your enthusiasm. All enthusi friends, uh, Richard, yourself yeah. and all friends to bless us with your enthusiasm. <laughs> and uh, so now with the enthusiasm I, of... Can I, can I yes. say a few words? Yes, uh, yes, I please. just missed the connection for a few minutes. Yes. And I, I, about Ramanuja, is, for example, about Ramanuja's critique, Shwan has remarked that Shankara never denies at that dualistic plan which Ramanuja wants to assert. So, the way, for example, we can side with Ab Abhinav Gupta's, uh, we can side with Arabindo's critique of Shankara and Advaita Vedanta, but the, the way he construes it, if that is really Shankara's position, then his critique is valid. But the point is is that really shankara's position that i think that we have that we can respectfully differ with and side with kumara swami and others who have defended shankara on this point and now and criticized it, arabindo and so many others new new advaitins and others because it's a huge question of hermeneutics how do we approach these founding fathers who in a way develop the tradition, who are in a way with, with whom we are ever in a dialogue. We cannot in a way somehow go beyond them in, in a savage. They initiate the dialogue. I think Gadamers and all, if we get that through that, we never ideally reach to try to reach an authentic interpretation itself. That search is itself a problem. To search for the best interpretation is itself in a, in a way we are lost in that textual world. So revelation for which Shankara stands, for example, is fundamental invitation to experience the world afresh, not in any conceptual shibboleths. So fundamentally, we are invited to see the world as a mystery, as a beauty, and to dissolve into it, dissolve the ego into it, but then affirm it in a higher way that we feel it is a position of the self. I think their sages do agree. There is no disagreement between even Nagarjuna and Shankara, not to speak of Shankara and this Abhino, this Aurobindo, or Abhino Gupta and Aurobindo and Shankara. That was the point raised by, I think, if we, I think that can help us to move forward, forward this conversation. The sages really do not disagree. Lovely. Sages do not disagree because they come to the mountains of Kashmir. <laughs> so Kashmir is our mother. <laughs> Lovely. And, uh, and there, uh, there is a whole theory of disagreement in Abhinav between traditions. For example, he classifies all the 
Gavis traditions of the world. Then he then he tries to give the Kashmir Shaivism on the highest pedestal. But then he says, why all are in a way valid at their own point of view? So the world is diverse. We that is why, for example, six Orthodox Indian philosophical systems. Guinun's position is that they should never be compared or contrasted or critiqued as if they are separate systems. They are simply separate points of view. And the points of view, for example, Nia is takes fundamentally a logical point of view. Mimasa would take a ritualistic point of view. But Mimasa and Nia and Veda, they, they, should, they are not in fundamental disagreement. So that has been going in the position in his the great book, The Introduction to the Study of Hindu Doctrines. I think we can take a leaf from that and move forward. Thank you. And we can come to Dal Lake Kashmir <laughs> <laughs> and read some poems. So yes. uh, be, before Minati brings us to Dal Lake Kashmir, so we have Jagat Jyoti Bhai, another poet. He's, uh, he was speaking a few lines. So Jagat Jyoti, please. Uh, Jagat Jyoti. Uh, 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 hello. Uh, hello. हाँ हेलो सुना जाऊँ ची ठीक है माइक को पाखो पाने की कोहो हाँ जब तक मन हाँ जब तक ले आम जे एक वो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जी जी इकबाल को बोलते हैं जे आत्मा उन्नो हुए प्रेमोद ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन डार्कनेस टुवर्ड्स लाइट टुवर्ड्स सत्य गुडा मिथ्यातारिफ्रम आउटवर्ड्स अमर सब हाँ पृथ्वी को पृथ्वी समस्त मनीष उद्भिद समस्त को आम स्वीकार कर एमती कथ ये कथ अच्छी जो इंस्टेंट रही चु जो आइडोलोज एवं से स्वीकार करने जो आज जो श्रीमिंद इकबाल को लेकिन देखा तो आम भितर जो फ्लेक्सीबिलिटा जो नमनियतार एक स्वीकार स्वीकारोक्ति आज क्लास रहान तेणु आम आधुनिकतार जो कठोरता भितर अने को स्वीकार करने अन्न मनुष्य को देखा अन्य आइडोलोजी को भितर समस्त कथा टी एम कथ ना आधुनिक जो आधुनिकतार जो कठोरता असहिष्णुता मध्य आम परंपरा सहित समन्वय करने समीक्षा करने आज क्लास एक आह्वान तेणु समस्त को मो हृदय शुभे श्रद्धा अभिनंदन एवं धन्यवाद तपु सो तपु भाई जगत ज्योति महांती our friend say that uh, the the gift of today's thoughts were that how do we recognize the other accept the other and uh, in the in the heart cell of modernity how do we really embrace the other so i see nobendu dev nobendu would you like to share some thoughts Okay, so now Minoti, please. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Actually, I said that I will share a poem on uh, you know how poetry helps to overcome that nihilism. Actually, I feel when negativity engulfs you, me, or anybody, we can always look inside for the light. I mean. and uh, that is god for me that is god so this poetry is titled god my coach this is from my book new and new dawn 
lecture. This Thanks for being the light post in my misty path, making the roads brighter. Thanks for being the light post in my misty path, making the roads brighter. A giver, giving secretly, wishing heartily to make my journey easier. I know, I know it cannot make my distance shorter, but surely it led a beautifully filled me with hopes and prayer. The teachings, not the preachings. There is no comparison between you and me. We all shall shine when it is our own time. It gives me the trust of the genuine feeling. To be myself, God, would it have been possible without your generous help? You assured me making mistake at time is better. Always being perfect really does not matter. The life you gave is not about being rich, popular, educated, and perfect. It is to reach out the needy and show the gratitude, touching lives and being humble and honest. To keep learning and growing every day with hopes in horizon, aspiring for new heights, I will be there someday. And thank you everyone for the attention and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Minati. The poem is very, very much in tune with thank the you. spirit of our dialogue. Thank you. So now, Randeep, maybe we can invite Devendra to share his concluding thoughts, concluding word of thanks. Mm -hmm. Devendra, please. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, at this juncture, uh, I express my deep felt thanks and sincere gratitude uh, to your good self, first of all, for giving me this opportunity. And I also uh, would like to share my uh, uh, word of thanks uh, to uh, the convener of uh, this dialogue, uh, Professor Randhir Gautam. Now on behalf of a School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Raffles University, Nimrana, and Swadhyay Sahachakra uh, Vishwanidham Center for Asian, Asian Blue Journey in Puducherry, I uh, would like to express uh, my sincere thanks uh, to our uh, first speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammad Maruf Shah for his a uh, brilliant presentation and uh, demonstration and establishing a link between the thoughts of Sri Aurobindo and uh, uh, Lama Iqbal. Uh, next, uh, I would like to express my thanks uh, to our second eminent speaker of this uh, today's dialogue, uh, Mr. Richard Hodge for his benign presence and his thought provoking uh, deliberation. Uh, which uh, created a kind of uh, thought and left us uh, with a sense of question, uh, which will definitely result in form of some kind of research paper and further activities. Uh, next to uh, it, I would like to uh, express my word of thanks uh, to revered Dr. Justice Meenavi Gomber, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chief Patron of uh, School of Law, Raffles University in Imrana. I would also like to express my uh, deep, uh, deep felt gratitude and thanks to Professor Divakar Gorli, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Raffles University. Uh, I would like to express my deep uh, felt thanks to Professor Meera Chakravarti, ma'am. And how can I forget to uh, express my sincere thanks to uh, Meenati Pradhanji for her beautiful uh, poem, which was very uh, relevant to the present context. It was heart touching and full of thought. I would like to express my deep thank to all the eminent participants and co-learners uh, uh, who sailed in this journey uh, of co-learning uh, uh, in the able uh, guidance of Professor 
Anand Kumar Giri sir and convener Professor Ranjit Gautam. So with uh, this, I would like to express my word of thanks to each and everybody who helped uh, some way or other way to uh, materialize this program. So thank you all from bottom of my heart. Have a nice day. Good luck. Namaste. Thank you, Devendra sir, for your kind words. <laughs> it's and, my pleasure, uh, man. And uh, of course, uh, we are all members of the family. <laughs> so we, we take this opportunity to raise our hands to the divine <laughs> and embrace some trees as we embrace each other. I just wish to again uh, offer my you know, deep sense of embrace and, and, and uh, to Maruf and, and Richard and, uh, for your generosity. And the day after tomorrow, on 27th of July, we are not sharing a conversation on social sciences and regional imaginations of India. In a way, this carries the germs of some of our thinking today. How do we really overcome colonialism in our thought, and grounded thinking, the rooted global philosophy that Richard is pointing to? How do we learn with our roots of thinking? So I invite all of you to please join. The link I have also posted on Facebook. And just to give you a little glimpse of our journey in the next week, on August 1, next Sunday, we are having a dialogue on Gandhi and Gramsci. As Richard was talking about the beauty of border crossing thinking. So Antonio Gramsci from Italy and Gandhi, so that we are having. Then on August 8th, in collaboration with World Anthropology Congress, we are hosting a very interesting conversation on global peace and development uh, on 8th of uh, August. And on 15th of August, on Sri Aurobindo's birthday, we thought what would be a tribute to Sri Aurobindo, again, continue this journey of co-thinking. So we are uh, planning to have a dialogue on this theme, Sri Aurobindo and Ambedkar. So I invite all of you to kindly join us. So, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all respected participants.